They all those every time that one of Mike Madigan's skyscrapers, there's 45 of the of the most expensive uh, high rises downtown, represented by Speaker of the House Mike Madigan, who's also chairman of the State Democratic Party, who calls over to John Bar uh, to Joe Barrios and says, "My client's tax bill is too high. Lower it." Barrios says, "Yes, sir." Lowers it. That gets shifted onto the rest of us. And that's, I mean, we could talk about TIFFs. You want to do that too? Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, there's an endless stream of conflict of interest there. Right. Because Mike, Mad Mike Madigan, let, for, let's, talk, let's talk about Mike Madigan for a second. How much power does Mike Madigan have in the state? He runs the state. Mike Madigan's the speaker, the chairman of the party, and... And the attorney general. And the attorney you know, general's by, father. By default, correct, mm -hmm. by, as, as the father. And, and also, but isn't he the top attorney in one of the top law firms in the state? He's a partner in a law firm. And so when, say, when my business, when I have to go, if I'm elected, I have to go to Springfield, what, four months a year, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Now I'm away from my business and making less money. Um, mm -hmm. John Cullerton and Mike Madigan don't have that problem because they're property tax attorneys. And so they share in the, the revenue from the firm even when they're not there. And there's a recent article. It's in the one Tribune. no show and one no work. Right. And there's a recent, recent article in the Tribune where Cullerton passed a bill that favored one of his clients. No. And, and then and he, said, <laughs> he said, I didn't know. And he said, I didn't yeah. know. And of course, that happens on the city level. Ed, um, Ed Burke is not only one of the top aldermen, but he runs one of the top law firms. And, and always that happens. And that's what happens. You you, you got to be careful. It's it's a part time job, correct? What what you what you're running for is a part time. State representatives are part time job. Sure. So you're supposed to have a second job, and yeah. if if you do it right, it, there is no conflict of interest. But what these guys do is they they get a job that that puts them in direct con conflict with what they're doing as state rep, and then you know bounces off each other. Where you know your client comes in, I need some uh, some zoning favor, and it just works through the ladder, mm -hmm. and that's it's the the, the haves versus the have nots. Mm -hmm. um, you recently found an interesting loophole in the state voter registration program. You want to tell us a little yeah, bit about that? Yeah, I put the video up on uh, YouTube and on my Facebook page. Uh, there's a loophole in the Illinois voter registration application, and you can see it if you go to the, uh, you just Google it really, mm -hmm. Illinois voter registration application PDF. It'll come right up. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you can find my video on YouTube. And what it is is if you look in box number nine, mm -hmm. there are three check boxes. One says check here and list your social security number. Mm -hmm. Well, every 12-year-old in America Every younger, I think, because of the way you can deduct your kids on your income taxes. Mm -hmm. Everybody in America has a Social Security number at a very young age now. So if you don't have a Social Security number, check, you know, okay, if you do have a Social Security number, list it here. Check this box if you want to list your driver's license number. Mm -hmm. and then there's a third box in, in box number nine. Check this box if you have neither a Social Security number or a driver's license. And then sign at the bottom of the form affirming, swearing or affirming you're a U.S. citizen. Sign this form and mail it into your Board of Elections and you're a U.S. voter. All right, so, so for, it's for a people, loophole for illegals. For, for people that don't understand, how, how could you possibly not have either a driver's license or so, social security card? What, what are some common examples of a person that has neither? Illegal aliens. Correct. So basically, if you're an illegal, you would check the third box and then you know, commit a little bit of fraud, and then you become an Illinois, Illinois voter. Right. That's, that's the loophole you found. And the loophole is there because the machine wants it there, including Michael Madigan. Right. It, it, this didn't, what you're saying is that this didn't It's not just, an accident. Right. It, I, I, and I don't think, it's important to note that there's a third box there. It would have mm -hmm. been one thing if they forgot to put something in there to keep that out. But they actually put a third box in there. Uh, you, you're also, you've, you've made a name for yourself opposing red light cameras. What, what are red light cameras? They're uh, automatic ticket machines, ATMs. It's uh, what the city does is they raise tens of millions of dollars a year through this form of taxation of its citizens. Uh, the city of Chicago has short yellow lights, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have short yellow lights for safety. It has short yellow lights for revenue. All right, so these are these are cameras up up above the the lights that catch drivers as they commit. Yeah, and you know, let me laws. let me mention something else as far as privacy goes. Mm -hmm. These uh, red light cameras are can be used to track license plates also. Now I said this on WGN radio. And um, Brian Steele from the mayor's office said, that's not true, that's not true. Well, one week later, I was at the public hearing at the subcommittee on red light cameras in the US, uh, the uh, Illinois Senate, and the police chiefs testified that, oh, these red light cameras are great because they can track license plates. Okay. Now, the other thing, we could say the same thing with IPASS, and I'm against the, t the toll situation as well, but that's a separate issue. All right, so you're, you want to ban them because... Ban the red light cameras, right. But is, that's a, is that a state issue or is that a city issue? It's a state issue because um, state law had to be changed. And one of the, one of the proponents uh, in favor of the red light cameras and in favor of changing state law to make those cameras legal in certain counties in Illinois was John Fritchie. Okay, and that's the guy? 
whose seat you're running for. Yeah, and John gets frustrated. He says, you're not running against me. I'm out of the race. I'm running for county board. And I said, no, John, I'm running against your record. <laughs> All right, I got you. All right, let's, let's get back to the, uh, to the pension. When you say it's an unfunded liability, what, is, what does that mean? Well, it means that we're promising state workers that that pension fund will be there for them, and we're lying to them the very same way the U.S. Congress lies to us about Social Security. All right, and, and to, to give people an idea, you know, people my age, even your age, they, we don't expect to get our Social Security. Why, why don't we expect to get it? Because it's going to go broke in maybe 10 years. Because <laughs> the, the revenue keeps getting smaller yeah. and the expenses keep getting larger. Mm -hmm. And they've, on these things, they've either crossed the threshold where, the, where they're into the negative or they will be soon enough. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're saying is happening with the state pensions. What happened this year, actually, Social Security is spending as much as is coming in. Well, but of course, we're not really using Social The Social Security fund's been stolen for a long time right. anyway for the now, general applications. If you were a, you know, you run a business. Mm -hmm. if you, I do run a business. Right. If you, <laughs> if you, can, can you run that kind of accounting on your business? Well, what let's say. You, what do you say? You, you know, you got uh, five billion in, in debts coming due next year. What, what, where would that show up on your, on your, uh, on your financial Well, statements? I'll tell you, if you try to pull that same scheme, like what the, what the state of Illinois is doing with pension fund or like the U.S. Congress is doing with Social Security, they would call you Bernie Madoff and they'd lock you up. Right, or, or Enron, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that this kind of accounting, if it were done in the private industry, you know, the people go to jail. It's not allowed. So w w what's the, 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 the problem structurally with the pensions is we, we, what, we let them retire too early, we give them too, too good a, a benefits. Well, not, not that they shouldn't have good benefits, mm -hmm. but we're paying them above market salaries for the work they do. Mm -hmm. We're then giving them Cadillac health plans that can cost $10,000, $20,000 a year. And now, I, I pay my own Blue Cross Blue Shield, and granted, mm -hmm. I'm a young guy and I don't have too many health problems. Mm -hmm. my, my own Blue Cross Blue Shield that I pay for myself is 300 a month, it's 3600 a year. Mm -hmm. But the state employees, $10,000, $20,000 Cadillac health plans. Mm -hmm. Then we're giving them millionaire pensions so they can retire early and go double dip with another job. Right. And what does that mean, double dip? That means they go and get another job while they're collecting a pension. And yeah. oftentimes they go and get another job maybe for the city yeah. or for the county. You know. And then uh, and then it becomes double dipping. Do it, they, they get, get a job at the state, then go get a job at the county, then go get, get a job at the, the city, city, then go. And then <laughs> once you're fully retired, what happens? You're getting two, three pensions yeah. all, all at once. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's a nice, nice gig if you can get it. But yeah. but for the taxpayers, you're, you're essentially what you're doing is you're paying somebody's salary from the time they're 50 for doing no work all the way until they, they pass away. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get unfunded liabilities because we're promising these people a whole lot of money and where are we gonna get it from? Yeah, and the, we're already at a $13 billion deficit. Well, with everybody else in the private sector, the private sector you end up, you have to do a 401k or IRA with your own money. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably don't get any matching on a 401k nowadays from your employer. Mm -hmm. Then you have to do social security, right? Mm -hmm. So the state employees are not in the social security program mm -hmm. like the rest of us. They're not using a 403B, which would be their version of a 401k. Mm -hmm. I want to end, from this point forward, no more pension credits for state employees. Give, give them a 401k, IRA, 403B, they save themselves. Mm -hmm. No match from the state. There's no mm -hmm. reason for us to match it. We're in a recession. They, they wouldn't do any better on the outside in the real world. And then let's also get them in the Social Security program like the rest of us. All right, so let's make sure people understand what, what you're saying. If you work for the state, your retirement plan would be a 403B, and the, you know, that, that just gets into technical tax terms. But all that means is a portion up to 15% of your salary would, would go tax-free into a retirement program into mutual funds. And then it would grow until you retire. Mutual funds, gold, whatever. Right, exactly. As far as the exact what, percentage, I'm not a CPA, but, right, but the, what, the deal is they ought to be saving with their own money rather than being promised an endless obligation. What's important about that is if you worked for any company, Pepsi, IBM, that's what you'd be offered. So you're, you're, you're only offering what any private company would Market offer. wages and benefits, imagine right, that. Right, imagine that. <laughs> and, and, and again, the, differ, the, the difference between that and a pension is a, a pension, the, the, the company, in this, case, mm -hmm. in this case, the government is coming up with all the money State for, taxpayer. Your, for, your retirement, for your retirement, whereas with a 401k, it's all being used, it's all your money being used. The, the benefit for you is the money you're using is tax-free. Um, and, it and it grows and it grows. Uh, but, but your proposal is no different than what IBM or any other company does.